Our next lightning talk is Job Schneider presenting on BGP shutdown communication. Thank you. My name is Job Snyders. I work for NTT Communications. And I'm here today to share with you uh, some work we've been doing over the last few months to make your operational lives easier. And we will specifically focus on the aspect of communication between eBGP neighbors. All of us have eBGP sessions, and these sessions can be considered the wire between two tin cans. And although it is beautiful that we can uh, announce route announcements from our side to your side, or vice versa, there are a few tiny things that are lacking. For instance, if I'm not entirely sure who is on the other side of the wire, and that could easily happen at public internet exchanges, or because parts of your administration were lost 10 years ago when you migrated from this database to that database. Um, so we're left with very few actual communication mechanisms between eBGP neighbors. One thing you could do is you, you could flap the session or, or use optical signals like, dear peer, are you there? What's up, Mike? Oh, I'm, I'm Job. Oh. <laughs> what do you think of the game last Sunday? <laughs> and then if the other guy falls silent, then either he didn't like the game or there's some issue between the two of you, technical issue. Um, and this especially becomes apparent with maintenance. We announced to our customers, dear customer, two weeks from now we'll reboot this device. Uh, there will be 30 minutes of downtime. This is the tracking ID. This is where you can call into the NOC and, and et cetera. And then two weeks later, when the session actually goes down, customers will email the NOC and, and be like, why is the session down, dude? And then you show them the notification you sent them two weeks prior, and they're like, oh, oh, I forgot to add that to my calendar. And vice versa, this happens as well. We get maintenance notifications from other peers, and, and we are not always as disciplined as we should be in that regard. So to enhance this specific aspect of BGP operations, I uh, and two of my friends, we, we dove into the IETF, nerd, um, to, to extend the BGP protocol in such a way that when you shut down a BGP session, you can drop a tiny message in the uh, peer's syslog, or whatever mechanism he uses. And the way this works is, in the BGP protocol, you have a cease notification. And this is the message that is sent to the neighbor when the session is about to go down. And the cease notification has a crude extensibility in that you can just append data to that message. And in some versions of the cease notification, this is used to, for instance, indicate uh, uh, some information about why a max prefix limit was tripped or, or what caused the problem. And what we've done here is we've extended the shutdown event and the reset event that you can have up to 128 bytes worth of communication message uh, in that particular BGP message. And this is really neat because it builds upon an existing BGP message type so from uh, a protocol design perspective, it's a kind of, it's a small change. It's, we're, not, we're not changing BGP in a significant way. It is backwards compatible in the sense that existing speakers will not act weird when they receive this data because the session was going down anyway. Um, so that's, that's all quite nice. And what this looks like on, for instance, OpenBSD, who already support this, I can just type on the command line, this neighbor needs to be disabled, and I can append that short message. For instance, this is the ticket ID. We're upgrading, and we'll be back in 30 minutes. And what that would look like on the receiving side is you, you have the syslog message that says, hey, the session is now down. And next to that is a message that contains my shutdown communication, which I sent to that specific peer. And this 
I think will greatly enhance our operations uh, in, in the peering world. Uh, this is maybe what it could look like on Juniper or on Cisco IOS XR. When you clear a session, maybe this is what it will look like. So if we look at implementations, uh, the ITF still has that attitude that put your code where your mouth is and then you can progress things through the ITF much easier than if you have nothing to show for. Uh, so OpenBSD has this implemented. Go BGP, uh, PMX, the traffic analyze engine, Exa BGP has it, and there are decoders for Wireshark and TCP dump uh, available for protocol designers to debug this particular extension to the BGP protocol. And I've heard positive feedback from BERT, uh, a famous route server application. Cisco iOS XR has showed some interest. The Juniper people have showed some interest. Uh, and from Nokia as well, I've heard positive feedback. So this doesn't mean they will actually build it. This means you need to email your account managers, point them to this presentation, and say, dear account manager, could you please implement this feature because it looks useful to me. And the people inside these organizations, these vendors, uh, if they receive from multiple customers feedback that this is actually useful, it will be prioritized and maybe later this year we'll receive uh, these features. Or, and if, if no, none of you email into the account managers, then perhaps it's 2018, 2019, or maybe it will never happen. So it really depends on you guys. Email your account managers. Um, and of course, because it's 2017, and there is a whole world outside North America uh, that does not use the clean 7-bit ASCII stuff, uh, it will support UTF-8 and uh, does Unicode. That doesn't mean that your router will actually display these emojis. But for instance, XABGP actually shows the emojis. So that's kind of cool. But you know, of course, we'll only use this tool in a very professional and serious manner, and, and you know, use ticket IDs and operationally relevant information. Um, so the shutdown communication, it is 128 bytes max. This is to prevent visual spoofing, because it would be kind of annoying if half your syslog turned out to be this one shutdown communication message from a malicious actor. Uh, by keeping the message short, I believe, will uh, make it more uh, easier to grok for our operations. Um, that's it. Are there any questions? Um, a couple of years ago, about 2009 or so. Who are you? Oh, uh, my, Lenny Giuliano, Juniper. Um, there was a draft that was similar to this uh, BGP administrative information, something like that, uh, where you could just send text, um, any text. Do Not you perhaps mean the advisory draft? Yes, yes, that's it. And advisory. its successor, the operational uh, message draft? Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't see that. But uh, is this a uh, similar idea just at, at shutdown time or whatever happened to that? Uh, there certainly are similarities between the two efforts. Uh, however, this one has more implementations. Uh, so that's useful. And it doesn't define a new BGP message type. And I think that by introducing a new BGP message type in the IDR working group, IDR is responsible for the BGP protocol. It, it, it's kind of hard to sell such a big modification to the protocol. And this BGP shutdown communication, uh, it just redefines existing positions in the, uh, the protocol, so to speak. So from a, a protocol design perspective, this is like a tiny change, whereas uh, the other efforts were, were very big chunks of work that failed to get consensus and momentum. But in a way, they are similar. Uh, this extension only works at shutdown time or reset, 
which I figured would be uh, the starting point because that's where you need that additional information uh, most dearly. Yeah. Um, Chris Woodfield, Salesforce. I came to ask almost exactly the same question, what, which was, this is obviously tied to a shutdown. Is there any perceived usefulness to having a free for message type that is outside of a BGP shutdown event? Yeah. It is cer certainly worth discussing. Uh, I've been in touch with the offers of the uh, advisory draft that was started almost 10 years ago. Um, the intent is that we first finish this work, and if, there is, if this doesn't address all our operational needs, then we'll uh, attempt to formulate a way to send a message uh, while the session is up and not down. But we've, we split the two efforts uh, in that regard as, say, risk distribution. Yeah, this, this definitely appears to be lower hanging fruit and excellent progress. Thank you. All right, my time is up. Goodbye.